dear science learners, welcome to the new episode of Grade 4 Science Learning Activities. Let us start learning new science concept that will surely help you in understanding and answering your modules. I am Teacher Larisa, your learning buddy in exploring Grade 4 Science. In our last science episode, you learned about the importance of water cycle. Water continuously moves in the Earth's surface through the process of water cycle. Water cycle have different processes which include evaporation, transpiration, condensation, and precipitation. The sun plays a very important role in this cycle, most especially in the transpiration and evaporation process. These processes allow water to transform into vapor, dew, rain, snow, or hail, which makes it a renewable resource. Water cycle helps us to use and reuse water in our environment. For a quick review, can you identify the processes of water cycle in this picture? Comment down your answers below this video. Now that you know the importance of water cycle, we can now move forward to our next science lesson which is entitled, The Uses of Simple Weather Instruments. Science Learning Episode, The Uses of Simple Weather Instruments, Part 1, Weather Components in a Weather Chart and Temperature. At the end of this video lesson, you are expected to 1. Describe the different weather components in a weather chart and 2. Use different weather instruments to measure the different weather components. The earth is surrounded by a blanket of air called the atmosphere. The conditions of the atmosphere give rise to weather conditions. Ang pagbabago ng ating panahon ay sanhi ng mga salik nito na binubuo ng air temperature, wind speed and direction, and cloud formation na maaari nating sukatin gamit ang iba't ibang weather instruments. Now, let us see how do weather components look like on a weather chart. A weather chart tells about weather components that determine the weather condition at any given time. The daily weather report will help you know the weather condition. Mahalaga ang datos ukol sa panahon. Ito ay dapat na naglalaman ng tamang datos ukol sa temperatura, bilis at direksyon ng hangin at ng kondisyon ng kalangitan. Sa tulong ng weather chart ay maaari nating planuhin ang mga bagay na maaari nating gawin sa isang araw. It also helps us to be safe and to prepare for dangers and calamities. Now let us take a look at the elements of a weather report in Carmona Cavite. As you can see, there is a report in wind speed, temperature, and the sky condition. Here is another example of a weather report or forecast. There is also a report on wind speed and direction, sky condition, and temperature. Now, let us study this weather report. Para mas mabilis nating malaman ang kondisyon ng panahon sa mga lugar na ito, let us plot the weather condition using the given weather components on a weather chart below. You may try to answer this on your notebook. Do not forget to identify the important weather elements given on the weather report. Let us mark your answers. Here is the correct answer for our weather report activity. The weather elements identified in the report are temperature and sky condition. There are three places given on the report which are the Metro Manila, Baguio City, and Cebu City. The temperature in Metro Manila ranges from 30 degrees Celsius to 35 degrees Celsius, 20 degrees Celsius to 24 degrees Celsius in Baguio City, and 25 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius in Cebu City. We have the hottest temperature in Manila and coldest temperature in Baguio City. In terms of sky condition, the weather is fair in Metro Manila, it is cloudy in Baguio City, and there are dark clouds in Cebu City. 
Therefore, the weather is not good in Cebu City and they are experiencing a gloomy weather. To predict the weather, the temperature of the surroundings is measured. Sa ating mga nakaraang aralin ay ating natutunan na ang temperatura ay ang antas ng init at lamig ng isang bagay o ng isang nilalang na may buhay. The instrument that is used to measure temperature is called thermometer. A room thermometer has numbers each on each side. The left side shows the Celsius reading, while the right side shows the Fahrenheit reading. Look at the red column of the thermometer. The number near the end of the red column tells the temperature of the air. May mga thermometers na may Fahrenheit scale, Celsius scale, or pareho. Ang air temperature ay binabasa in degrees Fahrenheit or in degrees Celsius. The Fahrenheit scale is now seldom used. There are other kinds of thermometers which include clinical, room, or scientific. Now, let us observe how thermometers work in doing a short activity entitled, How Do You Use Me? Hello, dear science learners, and for today's activity, I gagamit tayo ng thermometer. In this activity, we will be learning how to use thermometers in measuring temperature. What we're going to do is, we will place this thermometer under the shade of the tree outside our house. Within 30 minutes, ay observe natin if magkakaroon ba ng pagbabago sa temperatura sa labas ng ating bahay. Every 5 minutes ay igagather natin ang data na ma-observe natin sa thermometer na gagamitin natin. And then after that, we will answer the guide questions following this activity. Here is what we're going to do in this activity. First, we will hang the thermometer outside the house under the shade of a tree. And then, we will record our observations every 5 minutes for 30 minutes. Next, we will plot the temperature every 5 minutes on the graph. And then, we will get the average of the temperature outside the house. The average temperature is computed by adding all the temperature and dividing the sum with the number of readings or observations. And lastly, we will repeat steps A to D to get the temperature inside our house. Here are the data gathered inside the house. By 12.05, the temperature is at 26 degrees Celsius. By 12.10, it rises to 28 degrees Celsius. By 12.15, it remains at 28 degrees Celsius. By 12.20, it rises to 29 degrees Celsius. By 12.25, it rises again to 30 degrees Celsius. And by 12.30, it rise to 32 degrees Celsius. Now, here are the data gathered outside the house. By 12.05, the temperature is at 30 degrees Celsius. After 5 minutes, the temperature rise to 32 degrees Celsius. After another 5 minutes, the temperature rise to 33 degrees Celsius. By 12.20, the temperature rise to 33.5 degrees Celsius. By 12.25, the temperature is at 34 degrees Celsius. And by 12.30, the temperature remains at 34 degrees Celsius. Now, let us answer some of the guide questions of this activity. 1. What is the average temperature inside the house? 2. What is the average temperature outside the house? 3. Compare the air temperature readings inside and outside your house. Are they the same at a particular time in different places? And 4. What do these data tell you? Now, let us mark your work. The answer for number 1 is 28.8 degrees Celsius or 29 degrees Celsius. For number 2, the answer is 32.75 degrees Celsius or 33 degrees Celsius. For number 3, 
the temperature outside and inside the house is different from each other. And for number four, the temperature varies depending on the given location. In our activity, we observe how thermometers work on two different setups. As you can see, the temperature outside the house is higher compared to the temperature inside the house. The angle at which the sun's rays strikes the surface affects the temperature of a place. Ito ang dahilan kung bakit napakainit tuwing tanghali sapagkat sa oras na ito ay tirik na tirik ang araw kumpara sa umaga o hapon. Ang mga lugar na malapit sa equator ay may mataas na temperatura sapagkat ito ay direktang natatamaan ng sinag ng araw. Here's the temperature in relation to the angle of sun's rays. During early morning, the sun is rising in the horizon. The temperature is at its lowest during this time. In mid-morning, the sun is getting higher. Then, the temperature is also getting higher this time. At noon, the sun is directly overhead. The temperature is at its highest during this time. In the afternoon, the sun is setting lower. The temperature is getting lower by this time. During evening, the sun is ready to set. The temperature is lower than that in the afternoon. The time of the day and the time of the year also affect the day's temperature. When there is no weather disturbance, the temperature is at its lowest in the morning. Further, the temperature is low during rainy days and high on a fine weather. Now, let us do this activity on what factors affect the day's temperature. Study the chart below and answer the following questions. Compare the temperature readings during the fine, fair, and rainy weather conditions. For the first question, at what time of the day is the temperature at its highest? Correct! The answer is at 12 noon. Next, number 2. At what time of the day is the temperature at its lowest? Correct! The answer is at 6 a.m. Next number, at what weather condition are the temperatures high? Correct! The answer is fine weather. Next, number 4. At what weather condition are the temperatures low? That's right again. The correct answer is rainy weather. And for the last number, what factors affect the day's temperature? The factors that affect the day's temperature are weather conditions and the time of the day. Did you get all the answers correct? Wow, you're doing a good job! Do you want to learn more about the other two simple weather instruments that we use to measure other weather components? Click the link below this video for the part 2 of our lesson on uses of simple weather instruments that will discuss on wind vane and animal. That's it, science kids! I hope you learned something new in our science episode for today. If you like this video, do not forget to hit like and subscribe sa ating channel at i-ring mo na rin ang yung notification bell para manatili kang updated sa ating susunod na videos. You can also follow me on my different social media accounts.